All right, so let's talk a little bit more about domains. That what you should think of the domain as, the domain of a function is a set of valid inputs. that function. So, like in the case of this like final grade assignment for a calculus class, it doesn't make sense to ask about what's the, the final grade of, you know, um, George Washington, because he's not in this class, it doesn't make sense to ask what his final grade in the class is. He doesn't have one. Um, another way to think about this is, I like to think of it as like the language the function speaks, that if you want to get something out of the function, you need to ask it a question it can understand. You need to ask it in the language that it, it speaks. Right. And this is really important in mathematics, but it, it should make a lot of sense, right? You wouldn't try to stick a VHS tape into a DVD player. Right. And that's like sort of a, this is sort of a thing about domain. If you think about a DVD player as sort of a function that maps a DVD into, you know, pictures, moving pictures and sound on your, your TV, um, it's a function and it doesn't understand things that are not phrased as DVDs. Right? You can't stick a VHS tape into a DVD player. And that's the same as saying you would never divide by zero. But this is a, a statement about domain, that the function that sends x to 1 over x doesn't make sense if you try to plug in zero. Likewise, you wouldn't pour Gatorade in the gas tank of a car, and you wouldn't pour, you know, diesel in the gas tank of a gasoline vehicle. It just doesn't make sense. And that's really the same as saying, you know, you would never plug a negative number into the function that takes the square root. It would be wildly irresponsible. So this is what domain is. And there are sort of two main restrictions on domains. So again, in this class we're talking about functions between the numbers and numbers. There's sort of algebraic restrictions, not doing stuff like this, not dividing by zero, not taking the square roots of negative numbers, not taking logarithms of non-positive things. So there's sort of two main domain restrictions. reasons why you shouldn't ask about certain numbers. There's algebraic reasons, like those listed above. So these are algebraic reasons that you wouldn't ask what the function is at zero when you're dividing by that thing, and you wouldn't take the square root of something if it's negative. Um, there's also sort of real world considerations, right? that oftentimes your function models real life behavior, like um, the cost of building a x by x by x box out of some material. Um, right. 
like if you're you're building a box, it's not possible to build a box where the side length is negative, right? So there's a, a real, like, sort of algebraically, it might make sense to ask, you know, if x is this, what is x cubed? Um, but if x is a side length, it doesn't make sense to ask, you know, what's the volume of a box where the side lengths are negative 1? That doesn't make sense. You can't build a box with side length negative 1. So things like uh, length and areas and volumes need to be greater than or equal to 0 because that doesn't make sense otherwise. So like lengths, areas, volumes are greater than or equal to 0 in real life. Or if you're talking about like manufacturing or something, you might ask, you know, how much does it cost to build, you know, 17 Wii U's or switches, um, whatever it may be. But it doesn't make sense to ask how much does it cost to build, you know, Pi cars. Because you can't build a Pi, Pi cars. Like, you can't build a fraction of a car. You can build entire cars. It doesn't make sense to build, like, a fraction of it. Um, so you may need to create whole numbers of things as opposed to real numbers of things. Right? If you're buying apples at the store, you're not allowed to cut an apple in half and, and spend half the money. They, they kind of frown on that. Um, and likewise, probably need to do greater than or equal to zero a lot of times, you may need to do whole numbers, and like there's also sort of limitations, right? Um, if you're talking about how many cars you're going to build, it's not actually possible to build a hundred billion cars, because there's limitations on materials, and there's limitations on your budget, like you can't hire enough workers to actually produce that many things, and you don't have the raw materials required to make that many things. So there, there may be other limitations. Like if you're talking about you know, how fast you can go in an hour if you're driving x miles per hour, that's not a very interesting function, but like x there not only probably needs to be non-negative, it doesn't really make sense to drive negative miles per hour. You're still moving if you're driving backwards, right? Um, but also you can't drive faster than the speed of light, right? So there's this sort of physical limitation that there's an upper bound on how fast you can travel. So there's these sort of two types of reasons why your domain may be smaller than you might expect. There may be limitations on what numbers it makes sense to plug into your function. So this is what the domain is for. Is it allows you to know if you're asking a question in the right language. And sort of on the flip side, the range of a function the domain is the set of valid inputs, the range of a function is the set of all outputs. And we talk about like the target space, so like when I assign a grade in a class, I should be assigning a number between 0 and 100. You can't get negative scores in a class, you can't get more than 100% in a class. Um, but we've also talked about the fact that not all of the numbers between 0 and 100 are actually going to get assigned, because there's simply not that many people in the class. There aren't infinitely many people in the class, so it's not possible to assign all of the numbers between 0 and 100 as grades. And so if I'm only interested in the numbers that are actually assigned, I'm talking about the range, the actual outputs of the function. So the range of a function, f, is the set of all outputs. Of the form f of x, where x is in the domain. Whenever I write f of x, you implicitly understand that that input x has to be in the domain of the function, otherwise it just does not make sense. It, it makes as much sense as sticking a VHS tape in a CD drive. Um, so this is always understood. If I write f of x, x has to be in the domain of the function. It's implicit. Um, 
And this is sort of more interesting than the target space in general, right? Um, if I'm talking about like the grades that are assigned in class, like the way the class went is very different if the range is all between you know zero and sixty. That means everyone fails, right? But it would also be really bad if all the grades were between ninety and one hundred. That everyone sort of did probably too well. Like um, it's not very likely that everyone in the class would get some type of A. Um, that would probably mean that the class was somehow too easy. That I wasn't being stringent in my grading, or rigorous. Um, so we're interested not so much in the target of a function, but the actual range, the actual outputs that occur. Um, so in general, the range is a subset. of the target. And it might be the whole thing, but it can be a lot smaller. So that's what the domain and the range of a function is. And now if we want to start picturing what a function is, we want to look at the graph.